Oh, that is just nasty. From Compass Key, we sail about 11 nautical miles to Big Major Spot in strong winds with gusts up to 25 knots. The wind is predicted to come from the west tomorrow, which means there will be no protection from any land mass. So we prepare for the strong wind and waves. We take our dinghy to the beach, which is not an easy task because the waves are crashing onto the beach. So we are at Big Major's Key, also known as Pig Beach, and Pig we're going to go check out the pigs. It was really hard getting here because... Because we had to wade in and we also had to learn how to uh, anchor out and shimmy in with the anchor and trust it. <laughs> Our dinghy is not the lightest, it's not the heaviest, but it's not the lightest with the uh, big horsepower engine, but it seems to be dealing very, very well with the surge coming on shore. We were both in it and had it anchored for 10 minutes as we were negotiating how to get in. We're both wet. The first thing we notice when walking up to the enclosure are the signs. I was very curious as to what prompted the big sign stating, no fireworks. The pigs appear to be well fed and we see pans out, some labeled with the pig's name and I'm left wondering as to the reason for this. We came in the afternoon after the pigs had been fed and most of the pigs were too lazy to even come to greet us. Can you get your carrots out? Just remember, one sees a carrot, they're all gonna come after you. Yeah, that's probably true. Well, maybe. They, they're so well Just fed. throw it on the ground so they don't come after you. You don't want to put it on the ground because it's bad for them because they take a sand. You put it on a little stick. So how did the pigs come to live on this island? The most popular theory is that the pigs were originally left on the island by sailors or pirates. Another theory is that the pigs swam over from a shipwreck somewhere in the area and they were able to find food on this island. A third theory suggests that they swam there after escaping from an unlucky farmer on Staniel Key. Whatever the reason, this is a popular spot for tourist boats coming to see the swimming pigs. However, with the waves crashing onto the beach, we are not surprised that no pigs are willing to venture into the water today. Even though we don't see any swimming pigs, we have a fun time watching the baby pigs and are glad that we stopped. As the sun begins to set, the wind and the waves calm slightly, making the anchorage a little more comfortable. Our next stop is Daniel Key. So we spent a day anchored in front of Big Majors and that was really wavy. It was very rough and lots of reports of people not having a good time. What made it really rough was it was very windy and then the waves started coming in perpendicular to our vessel. And for catamarans, they kind of go like this as the waves hit them sideways. But if you're in a mono hull where it's just one hull, it rocks like that. And uh, <laughs> one of our friends reported that they woke up and literally stood up and was holding onto a bar in the center of their mono hull as it went back and forth for about two hours. The very next day, they called a marina in decided they wanted to relax there yeah, because sense. this may extend for a while. After a day big majors, we head to Staniel Key, which is only about two nautical miles away. There are a lot of shoal areas to avoid, and we find ourselves weaving through the keys to reach the anchorage area. Thunderball Grotto is extremely busy, but we've anchored close enough that we can wait until the boats leave before heading over. We are anchored near Staniel Key. Behind me is Thunderball Grotto. It's famous as being a site for several of the James Bond movies. We're gonna get our snorkeling gear on and head over there to do a little snorkeling. So there is the entrance. And as you'll see, there's a welcome sign. Welcome to Thunderball Grotto. So we are finally headed into Thunderball Grotto. We've had to wait uh, at least a day because it has been really choppy for the last couple days and very strong winds so we waited it out until it's very calm today.
Our first trip to Staniel Key is to a bit of an unusual site. We found a small beach that is a short walk to the town garbage disposal area. There is no dock to tie up at, so Jim has to be a bit creative in securing the dinghy. We're dropping off uh, about four weeks worth of trash. Three uh, garbage bag fulls at the Staniel Key dump. Why do we have so much trash? Because we have not been anywhere that can take trash. And so you hold on to it and we uh, now have a lot to dump. Yes, yeah, so the last marina we were at was uh, at Atlantis. So we've just been holding on to our trash. There's no trash places to dump trash in the Exumas except for marinas really. So this is the first place that we There's could dump not it. Not even a number of the marinas won't even take trash yeah. unless you pay them for it, which is fine. Um, but no, this is Staniel Key and it's much more of a developed area. The garbage shop is not terribly scenic and I threw my garbage in the pit as requested on the sign. Instruction on what to do with our garbage. As you can see, they burn the trash. So this will all be burned soon. In the Bahamas, you'll find a lot of uninhabited islands. And one of the things about the uninhabited islands means that there's no place to deposit your trash. This is especially true at the Exuma Land and Sea Parks where no trash disposal is allowed anywhere in that whole jurisdiction. So what do you do with all that trash that you're accumulating? Firstly, remove all packaging in the U.S. The Bahamas is not very well equipped to deal with trash disposal as well as recycling, so make sure you leave it all behind. And I'll even go so far as to take off the packaging and just leave an inner pouch. For example, this where I leave the directions in the bag and have the inner pouch that I put in an extra bag. That way you get rid of the cardboard. Cardboard can be a problem, especially if you're in moist conditions or areas that are subject to bugs. So I like to play it safe and get rid of all the cardboard that I can. Another thing that we do is we bought these resealable watertight containers that we use to store all our dry goods. This is a watertight bin. As you can see, I put the goods in here and I've also put the directions in that bin itself. Then you can just get rid of all the trash in the U.S. and use these instead. Also, we flatten all cans, including aluminum, tin, paper. Any can will flatten. We try to flatten everything as much as we can so it takes up as little space. As far as food goods, what we like to do is we like to store all our food goods that we can't get rid of in either glass containers. This is a glass container here that we stored up and we just put the food items in those glass containers or plastic containers with lids. Or as a last option, we use Ziploc containers and we just put it in there because that stuff is going to start smelling really badly very quickly. And and also make sure you have a place to store all that excess garbage. We actually use one of our aft cockpit lockers. It has a drain on the bottom, so it allows airflow, which is very important if you don't want it to smell too bad. Dog's taking a little break while I go throw the garbage away. Let's take a little break, it is hot today. On our second trip into Staniel Key, we park our dinghy behind the breakwater at the Yacht Club. We're going to check out the town with the Lab Mariners, and also we're going to check out the Nurse Sharks. As you can see, there's also a trash disposal available at the marina for $6 a bag. Big Mama Maggie. Big Mama Karma. Crazy Daisy. Big Mama Blanche. Oliver. What do you think? I think they're beautiful. Aren't they? Here it comes. He brings the spin up, you can touch it. It's Never abrasive. Get enough of it. It's Very like nice sandpaper. Variety. What? It's like sandpaper. Yep. Their fins? Yep. It feels like sandpaper. Yep. They're mesmerizing. They are. They're stacking up because they've been they trained like to see, bottom feeders. see bodies. Oh. They know that food's coming. Yeah. They know that food's coming. 
Are you pushing them away or petting them? Yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no idiot. I just saw a kid get his foot <laughs> snacked on. <laughs> Look how they're all piled up. <laughs> they must know that's where the fish go. I'd actually go stand out of it. It's probably safer. <laughs> Come on, put your toes in. Next <gasps> bait. That's what I keep telling her. Oh, too many coming at once. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggle your toes so they come over. Here comes one. Bike behind you. Bike behind you. <laughs> Are you pleased with the dinghy setup? No, but it'll do. I think figuring out how to uh, store the dinghy has been a bane for you. So we had such a nice time yesterday at our dinner at Staniel Key Yacht Club that we decided to do another dinner. It's been about a month since we went out to eat, so I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this dinner. going out to eat thing once in a while. <laughs> yes. Yes. We decided to do another dinner. <laughs> And we are both very happy about that, <laughs> as we always are. Exactly. So how many times have you been here? Twice. Twice? <laughs> exactly. So we're at the final course. Can I eat yet? All right, you can eat now. Join us next week as we travel to Great Guana Key, where we visit Black Point Settlement, see a blowhole in action, and then head to Little Bay to get better protection from the winds.